you know, as, uh, <clears throat> as God's people had circled <clears throat> the walls of Richo or Yeriko or Yericho, Yehoshua gave B'nai Israel, the children of Israel, specific instructions. <clears throat> we often try that with our children. Stay silent. <laughs> Stay silent until I give the order. But with those words, he reminds us that in every circumstance, there comes a time to shout. There comes a time, brothers and sisters, to shout. B'nai Israel have learned lessons as they have walked those laps. The first lesson they learned is God expects us to work. He wants us to be part of solving the problems that we have in our lives. Our Yeriko falls when we decide to engage in the solution. And not only does God want us to work, God wants us to wait. Not easy for most of us. And I'm not talking about the kind of wait that is procrastination. Why do today what I could put off till tomorrow? No, I'm talking about the kind of wait that demonstrates patience as God lines up everything in our lives while we are working and solving the problem. And finally, God expects us to win. He expects you to win. Not only does he want you to get ready for the conflict, but he wants you to mentally make up your mind that in the conflict, because God is on your side, you're going to be victorious. Tonight, we're day seven. And day seven is not like days one through six. There are no more lessons to learn. On day seven, the time has come for the people, the way to apply what you have learned. It's time to quit lapping the walls, and it's time to shout. It's time for us to shout and stand in awe of the power of God. For six days, B'nai Israel has been obedient. And now they're getting ready to hear the sound of the shofar, not just any shofar. It's the shofar the Kohanim were supposed to use in the year of Jubilee. The Hebrew word God spoke to Yehoshua regarding this particular shofar is the word Yovel, the word for Jubilee. It's the sound of restoration. What happened at Jericho is not just a shout of battle. It's not just a shout of praise. It's the sound of restoration. It means that righteousness has returned to the promised land. And every enemy that has occupied what God has promised to his children now has been served notice that they're going to be evicted because righteousness has returned to town. For years, many of you have been walking around the problem. Walking around the problem. I've seen it for 20 years. And many of you have been learning lessons with every lap, but tonight I believe with a shout of restoration, God is going to take you straight through where you have been walking around long enough. I believe tonight is when yesterday's slaves are converted to the soldiers in the army of the living God, like the song, Below the Shofar. They rush on the city, they run on the wall, for great is the army that carries out his word. No longer are you the stepping stone of Pharaoh. No longer are you the stepping stone of the government. No longer are you the stepping stone of the church. No longer are you a victim of the wilderness. This is the day that the Lord has made and ordained for our victory. When you lift up your voice, you unleash a teruah gadol, a shout of triumph in this house. I believe the barriers in your life are going to fall down flat because this day the Lord has made and our God reigns.
Now, there are many shouts that you'll find in Scripture. Many shouts. Some people shouted to God for joy. They shouted in triumph. They shouted in praise. Many times they shouted for help. And other times they shouted for freedom. And this Yom Teruah, how many of you with all that has been going on in your lives in this country and in this world have had enough? Have had enough that you are ready to bring a shout out to God? Even Mr. Guitar, Eric Clapton, he declares in his latest song, enough is enough. I can't take this BS any longer. It's gone far enough. There's, you write that one down. God has promised. God has promised us the victory. Do you believe that? God has promised us the victory in his word, and the time has come for timid believers to shout with boldness. The time has come for fearful to shout in faith for that promise. Tonight, we're going to see how our shout out to God restores and secures his promise. And so I'll read from Yehoshua chapter 6, specifically verse 10, and then I'm going to jump to 15 and 16. And so Yehoshua gave this order to the people, don't shout. Don't let your voice be heard. Don't let a single word out of your mouth until the day that I tell you to shout. Then, then you will shout. And on the seventh day, they got up early at sunrise and went around the city in the same way seven times. But that was the only day they encircled the city seven times. The seventh time, when the Kohanim and the priests blew on their shofars, Yehoshua said to the people, shout, <laughs> shout. Because Adonai has given you the city. Today, Israel has just crossed the Yarden, the Jordan, and entered into the land that God had promised to them hundreds of years early. And in front of them is a city called Yericho in Hebrew. And Yericho was, it was not a large city, but it was well structured. And it was a fortified city. It had walls that were impenetrable. Historians say that there were two walls. Both were about 30 feet tall. And they were built on a hill. The second wall was even taller than the first wall. The outer wall was about 6 feet wide, while the inner wall was approximately 12 feet wide, large enough for horses and uh, small chariots to, to run on. That's 18 foot of rock wall. And the people of Yercho were confident. They were confident that as long as they stayed inside the walls, as long as they were inside, they would be safe. It could just wait out the siege. And you are just waiting it out, riding the storm out, like the song says. Waiting it out. And further, not unlike it is approaching, it was the harvest season. And it had just taken place, so they had plenty of food, and they could really hold on for a long, long time. And not only that, they had a steady supply of water because there was a stream that was running right through the town. So there was no food issues, no water issues. They had the wall. They were good. They had all the necessities that the world provides to protect them, to provide for them. And they were confident that they could resist any extended attempts by God's people to conquer them. But God's people, God's people had them and have now something that people in Yericho were lacking. They had two things. They had God's promise and they had God's plan. That's what you have. You have God's promise, and you have God's plan. And first, the promise. Adonai said to Yehoshua, I have handed Yerucho over to you, including its king, 
and his warriors. God had already given it to them. God had already given your code to them. It hasn't happened in the physical. And yet, but it is already finalized. Your code will be in the hands of Israel. And when God gives you a promise, it may not be manifested in the natural of yet, but you can rest assured that God has already finalized it and spoken into existence. And secondly, God's people had a plan. We read verses 3 to 4 in chapter 6. You are to encircle the city with all of your soldiers and march around at once. Do this for six days, seven days. Koanim are to carry seven shofars in front of the ark. On the seventh day, you are to march around the city seven times, and the Koanim will blow the shofars. And then you are to blow a long blast on the shofar. On hearing the sound of the shofar, all the people are to shout as loudly as they can, and the wall of the city will fall down flat. And then the people are to go into the city, each one straight from where he stands. Now, there's a plan there. That's one problem with the plan, modest. There are no specifics. No specifics of how this is going to happen. That's because oftentimes a plan comes incomplete. We may want every detail from top to bottom, but God doesn't always, he doesn't always work that way. He has a plan for you, but he doesn't always work out. The, he doesn't really give you the specific details. Why would we need faith? Sometimes the plan even seems ridiculous. You hear it in your spirit and you go, what? Just ask Yehoshua about marching around the city and shouting, how military does that sound, brothers and sisters? <laughs> Sometimes the plan may be what you don't want to hear. So we just reject it because that certainly couldn't be from God. I don't like it. (laughs) And sometimes the plan has not come yet. And if that is the case, your job is to wait and to pray until he tells you what to do. God doesn't give you an assignment, and then abandoned you. What I want us to really look at tonight on Yom Teruah is there are four seasons. Four seasons each of us go through with every promise from God. Four seasons. And it's not the band. Season of patience. That's probably everybody's favorite. Everybody go, amen? Amen. Amen, the season of patience. Why don't you shout that one out? Let's all shout out, season of patience, yeah. Imagine six days of marching and seeing nothing happening. Nothing. I'm sure it wasn't an exactly pleasant environment. I'm sure it was a little warm, a little dusty, a little rocky. There's no drinking fountain. There's none of these are packing. <laughs> I would probably be the one guy as I'm walking around, be looking, is there any cracks in the wall yet? Anything happening here, dude? Anything. You see anything moving? Something happening here? But after three days and four days and five days, I'd be losing my patience. I would. Because you know me, I'm a very patient guy. <laughs> it didn't take you long to react in that one, did it? Uh, six days go by. Six days go by and nothing has happened. No signs of anything happening. When God gives us a promise, as the days and the weeks go by and we see nothing changing, it's very, very hard. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here. It's very hard to be patient. It's hard. I know. Believe me, I know. But it is a season that we must all endure. That's the lesson here. It's a season that we must all endure. Those who are patient will see the hand of God move in mighty, profound ways. Don't give up. 
Don't give up so quickly on your promise today. Keep moving. Keep believing. Keep waiting. And, of course, that takes us to the next season that we enter in after patience. Or in the next season of our promise is the season of obedience. How many would agree that obedience is perhaps at times a little difficult? A little, little bit difficult. Obedience becomes even more difficult when it doesn't make sense to you. And I can only imagine the thoughts running through the minds of the soldiers of Israel. You want me to march silently for six days straight. Okay, let me get this. And you want me to march around the city seven times on the last day. And then when it's all done, and then you want me to finally shout it out as loud as I can. And the walls are just going to fall down. Is that right? I got this right, dude? Seriously, is that what you're telling me? Because that's what all of us would say. Yes, you would. Don't deny it. You go, you're telling me to do what? What? <laughs> but Yehoshua was very clear. He was very clear with them. These are the commands that I heard from the Lord. These are his commands. Following them precisely was vital in fulfilling the promise that God gave them. That's a good thing, B'nai Israel obeyed, isn't it? In their obedience, they were able to see God do an amazing miracle right before their eyes. What instructions has the Lord given you? Well, I know these instructions right here. We can start with those. Are we obeying these? Pray tell? Are we? Because there's some pretty obvious ones in here, and I'm not so sure that we are. I'm not so sure. That might be interfering with your promise. For your promise to be fulfilled, brothers and sisters, make sure you're not cutting any corners out. You can't pick and choose, brothers and sisters. That's been done in the church too long. You just can't pick and choose any longer. Either you commit yourself to following this or you don't. Even things, even if things don't look like anything is happening, trust the Lord with all your heart and keep obeying. In time, at the right time, the walls, I promise you, will come down. And that is when you will enter into the next season of promise, and that's the season of shouting. That's the season of shouting. And we read from Scripture, so the people shouted with the shofars blowing, and when the people heard the sound of the shofars, the people let out a great shout, and the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city each one straight ahead of him, and they captured the city. What an incredible sight. What an incredible sight this must have been. In just moments, a strong, fortified city loses its impenetrable walls because God's people shouted. God's people spoke up. They were patient. They were obedient. And now they enter the season of shouting. And it was their shout in confidence and faith of the living God and his promise that tore those walls down. The last time God's people were facing the promised land, if you remember, they, they were patient to get there, true. They were obedient heading up to the promised land. But when the time came to shout for their promise, they cried. They whined. They did. No cheese with that. They whined. They whined instead. They whined with fear. They cried with fear. And that caused them to what? Miss out on the promise. And when you choose faith, you shout. You shout with confidence. You shout a shout of victory. You shout a shout of declaration. You shout a shout of faith. You don't hold back. Yeah, I, I think God's going to do this. Maybe, kind of, sort of. No, he's going to do it. He's going to do this. Because, you know, even if you can't see it yet, 
you're about to receive the promise God gave you. And I think we try to skip this season way too often. But I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, there is power. There is power in your shout. Have you ever been patient for a promise? Have you ever been obedient and fulfilled all that God has instructed you to do? Then enter the next season and shout. Declare your promise. And that leaves me with one final, perhaps for many, the most difficult season of all. You know what the most difficult season of all is? You know what it is? Any guesses? No, I'll tell you. It's the season of receiving. It's the season of receiving. We struggle with that one. That's, that's, our, that's our biggest struggle. And the people went up into the city, each one straight ahead of him, and they captured the city. They completely destroyed everything in the city with the sword. Men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. You know how they say donkeys? Because donkeys were a tremendously valuable asset in that culture and day. A donkey was very important. So in verse 2, God tells Yehoshua, he's given him the city. And in verse 20, the city is theirs as promised. 18 verses later, God was faithful to his promise. And through the shout of the faithful, the walls came down. But his people still had to take the city to receive their promise. And the, the walls are down. That happened. But they had to enter the city to take it. And after you have been patient, and after you've been obedient and shouted for your victory, the next season is significant. You have to receive the promise. You have to receive the promise. If they would have just stood there and never entered Yercho, it wouldn't matter that the walls had fallen. They had to take what God was going to give him. People of the way, people of the way of Messiah, when God gives you the green light, that means go. <laughs> Look how frustrated you get traffic lights when somebody's sitting there playing in their phone and the light's green. God feels that way. Let's go. Get the promise. Take it. And believe me, you will notice when he is saying it's yours. But if you refuse to receive it and take hold of it, you're going to miss out on your promise. Don't miss out on what God has promised you. Don't miss out on it. Bottom line is the only way to get through these four seasons is with faith. Declare it boldly, brothers and sisters. Declare it. Shout out loud when the master has promised. And this Yom Teruah, the master is saying, it's time. It's time to put aside passivity and timidity and start shouting for your promise. Be patient, yes. Obey his instructions, yes. But shout. And then receive your promise. We call that in martial arts the Kia. Hey! That's a shout. Gets the attention of your opponent, doesn't it, brother? Yeah, it does. Every one of us has been given a promise from the Lord. The question for each of us what season are you in with the promise of God? What season are you in? Is it. Is it the season of patience you're in? If so, settle in. <laughs> settle in. Wait on the Lord. Get close to him. Close as you can get to him. Maybe you're in the season of obedience. Then take some time before you leave tonight's service and ask yourself, how am I doing? How am I doing on obeying his plan? I wonder if I'm fulfilling everything he's asked me to do. That's what we do during the season of Teshuvah. That's what you're reflecting on. Am I really doing everything that he wants me to do? Would you pray that tonight? Would you say, Lord, search my heart. If I'm not doing everything you want me to do, 
then I'll take the consequences for it. You willing to take the consequences? No, I want the blessings. I want to do what you want me to do. And if there's any unclean, wicked way, disobedient way in me, let's fix that right now in Yom Teruah. Or maybe you're arrived at the season of shouting. And this is where fear and faith come head to head. Fear and faith come head to head in the season of shouting. Declare your promise with a shout out to God. Give him a shout out. And when the barriers are removed and the obstacles are moved aside and the walls come down, God's plan for you will not be fulfilled until you complete your part by entering into the season of receiving and redeeming. Take whatever steps are necessary to move into your promise. Remember, it's not what you shout. It's not when you shout. It's not why you shout. It's to whom you're shouting to. That makes the difference. Brothers and sisters, God has promised us the victory in his word, and Yom Teruah is our awakening. The word from God, this Yom Teruah, is the wait is over. Six days have passed. We're done lapping the building, the walls, the city. God has done his part. It's time for us to do our parts. Enough is enough. If the world is getting it, why aren't we getting it? The time has come for a shout out to God from his people. He's promised us the victory and it's time for us to take back what has been taken. Rise up, people of the way, with a teruah gadol of faith. Rise up the army of God. The walls are coming down. It's day seven, and the time has come for us to boldly shout out our victory in Yeshua. The time has come to step into and receive his promise. Amen. Shout it out. Shout it out.
It's Adonai Panavaleka Vikaleka. It's Adonai Panavaleka Vikaleka. It's Shalom. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And I pray the Lord will lift up his shout to you and bless your countenance. Beshem Yeshua Adonai. And the congregation says, I want to close this year's Yom Teruah remembrance for, for paraphrasing the words of an old hymn. We have a story to shout to the nations that shall turn their hearts to the right. A story of truth and mercy. A story of peace and light. And the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright. 
and Christ's great kingdom shall come to earth, the kingdom of love and light. And that is something to shout about. And so I bestow upon you tonight, Gemar HaTamatova, may your final ceiling be good. Amen. Daniel, hallelujah.